So you're welcome once again to Women Crash Expert Advisor. Today we'll be taking a look at the market in general, the financial market, and then uh, Women Crash to be specific. And then we we'll also go through how to uh, analyze the market in terms of um, trading trends or trading for spikes. So Larry is here with me, and Larry also introduced himself. Larry is a friend and a forex trader, also trades Boom and Crash. Uh, which he joined recently. Yes. So, Larry, you can take over now. Introduce yourself to our people. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, I'm Larry. Um, I'm here to take us through the scope of financial markets. Like, if someone says financial market, what comes to mind? Well, I, ideally, financial market just same as any other market. That we know we can talk about supermarkets you can talk about the various type of malls that we got and what comes to mind when someone says markets are two things you see that you go there to buy or you go there to sell as simple as that but but then other people also go there to just win the shop ask for prices and never buy anything so we looking at the type of markets that we have so basically the financial market what we sell there is um we sell financial instruments. We have the bond market, stock market, the forest market, the derivative market, different types, different funds. Everyone has its own rules that governs each trade. So we have to take note of that. But I believe this session we're going to focus on the boom and crash. So I wouldn't elaborate much on the other types. And Moving on to the boom and crash. First thing that you have to always keep in mind is your um, equity level. Your equity level because that can be your lot size dependent factor and your number of trades that you can go in for. So your equity is very, very key. And then we're looking at the other market intelligence. We're looking at knowing yourself when talking market intelligence, um, these are principles that governs your trade. So you have to first of all know yourself. Are you risk tolerant? Are you risk averse or you are risk lover? When I, when I say risk averse, someone that can project profit against risk. So if you are trading, you first of all look at, okay, this trade, Am I going to, if I'm to make profit, is it going to be higher than if the market goes against me? So such people always sit back, they analyze the market before they make trades. And we have people that tell term as risk lives. Yeah, they, have, they feel they have enough money, so they just jump into the market without doing any analysis, just trade. And then sometimes it goes in their favor, they make money along the line. If your methodology is wrong, you might crash your account, regardless mm -hmm. of how much you have, you can crash your accounts. So take notice, you have to first of all know yourself. Know yourself. Can you handle risk? People usually say, um, this money that you're comfortable losing, but even regardless of the money you're comfortable losing, so there's this anxiety when it comes to trading. So you have to really, really know yourself. And how do you handle excitement? How do you handle anger? You have to know how to handle this too. Because over excitement can let you forget your strategy or overlook your methodology and trade anyhow and eventually lose your money. And anger can also trigger certain revenge moods in you that can also lead you to lose your money and eventually crash your account. You have to really, really know yourself. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. And then secondly, you have to know the market. You have to know the market. And in this sense, you have to know how the boom and crash operates. You have to really know the market. And the market can either be your friend or your enemy, depending on the position you are in. If the market is your friend, you keep smiling, the market is your friend. But when it's against you, you are losing. It becomes your enemy. You become so furious. You are tempted to 
close trade, tempted to trade, like it becomes your enemy. You're tempted to prevent the market and all that. You have to know the market. And also knowing the market means knowing your methodology and setting them right. Know when to enter a trade and know when to say no, when to exit a trade. Very, these two are very important. Knowing your entry points is very crucial because meeting the market halfway can go against your business. Or going in a book position, a long position, and then at that very point, it start selling, you are doomed. I mean, your balance, regardless of how big your balance is, you are doomed. It will go against you. You, have to, you'll be, you can crash your account. So take notice. Your entry, if it's not your entry point, don't enter. Wait patiently. One professional trader said, he says that the market is always right. The market's always right. It's our opinion that sometimes are wrong. And he's right to say that. The market is always right. So we can't revenge the market. No. You intend to lose all that you have. So I think we have other two market intelligence that my brother would like to take over. Then I'll come in with the with my methodology and how I trade. So then all right. Uh, thank you very much, Larry. All right. So the next thing on board is um, making an, a plan and following it. Uh, we are looking at uh, the methodology. That is, you need to stick to one good strategy. Most of the times, we have several strategies. I, I see people having about 10 strategies every time. They are always switching between strategies. They have moving averages on Monday. They have RSI on Tuesday. They have something else on Wednesday. And at the end of the week, they, they don't really have any particular strategy they stick to. It's like changing your your car or change, it's like changing your car every day. You, you cannot be identified with a particular car because you're always changing your cars. So stick to one good strategy or at most three good strategies. And the question is, at what time do you switch between strategies? If you are going to switch between strategies, when you find out that one strategy does not work in a particular trend of the market, let's say when the market is trending downwards, a particular strategy may not be working. So at that point in time, it's very expedient to switch to another strategy. So that's a one good time uh, where you can switch strategies. Okay, so stick to one good strategy. You see it's working for you, you stick to it. Don't, don't see something on YouTube and all of a sudden you neglect your good strategy. Sometimes you have better strategies than the ones you see on the net. But because there's an influx of information, you feel like I need to try every strategy. No, just get one that is good, that works with you, that gives you some positive net profit for the day and then work with it. I hope that's fine. And then also... Uh, the daily target. Uh, most people do not have a daily target. They're like, okay, let me just go with what happens for the day. I think if you have a daily target, it gives you a direction for the day. See, if I'm going to get $10 every day, it puts me on course. When, when I wake up, I know I'm after $10 today. After $10 today. And you shouldn't overburden yourself with so, so much of a, a very high target. Don't set an outrageous target, set something reasonable. Okay, $10 is reasonable, $20 is reasonable, maybe $100 is reasonable for the day, depending on the equity you have. So have a daily target and stick to it. Most of the times, personally, speaking from personal experience, when I trade beyond my daily target, I get in, into trouble. Most of the time when I trade beyond my daily, and that is why I added it to the seven hard lessons. And one of the seven hard lessons was that when you attain your daily target, you just quit for the day. But as Larry said, you can get so excited that you overtrade. And at the end of the day, you lose everything you probably gained for your daily target. So have a daily target and stick to it. By so doing, you keep yourself in check. You manage your risk. Right. So Larry, I think I'll cover methodology and daily targets. And then the, the risk management, not overtrading your account. So... At this point, we would like you to introduce us to 
uh, boom, boom and crash. I mean, selling, demonstrating uh, the, the trend okay. trading. Yes, please. So let me, okay. let me make you a host. So you share yes, your sir, screen. You. All right. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, guys, actually, I'm using my phone and he's using his laptop just for us to have a feel of how each works. Because I believe some of us usually will not be with our laptops, but we'll we be with our phones. So just go through the basic setups, basic moving average setups. I'll be taking us through moving averages. And then, first of all, when we talk about boom and crash, there are two there are principles that govern these traits. Boom usually moves downwards. That's cell trends. That's boom. It's, it's a cell trend or a short position kind of thing. What's the... Let me share my... Okay, so let me just share my screen so that we understand. Okay, so this is my, this is my screen. Um, so um, the boom is a cell trend. Um, let me share my screen now. So the boom, this is boom, boom thousand. So boom thousand or all the booms are in cell trend, cell positions, all the crashes are in buy trends, that's long positions. So this moving average is 17 period, simple close moving average. And how we trade, I usually going for the, the trend trading. So since it's a boom, I'm looking at I'm looking at the downwards trends. So for instance, at this um so at this position, I'll decide to sell when the when the candles cross beneath my moving average. And this is the five minute time frame. So we have different time frames. I believe you all know that you have the 15 minutes and then you have the five minutes and 30 minutes, one hour, and we can know that. So we would experiment the trend that I'm talking about. So let's use a five minutes. So this is a five minutes. So this is boom thousand. And to make it much easier, sometimes it's very dicey to know because at a point, the, the candles will be moving up, down on the moving average. So how do I to know which trend actually is the, the cell trend. So at that moment, you can decide to add an extra moving average, an extra one. So you change this time period to, low, let's say, 30. Then you change the color to red so you don't get confused. Yeah. So you are looking at... So, so we are looking at crossovers. This is boom thousand. Okay, the boom thousand. You can see the green and red. There's a wide gap. I wouldn't trade. I wouldn't trade this pair because there's a wide gap. There's nothing like a person. I'll come to boom five hundred. This has sold for a very long time. We missed this entry. We missed this entry. This is a solid entry point. We missed it. That took for a very long time. So we are skeptical entering. And then it's just an experiment for us to really understand how the boom can crash. So at this point, looking at my time, 450. So I just go in for a trade. I'll go for sale. It has really stood for a very long time. Ideally, I wouldn't sell in this market. I wouldn't sell in this market. Why? Because it has sold for a very long time. There are, there are possibilities of spikes, but I just want us to understand how the boom works and then the crash works. So we're looking at the, we just entered the trade and you are in profit now. You are in profit now. And profit now, 0 0.09 cent. 
and it will just keep going high and high and high. And depending on your equity, depending on your equity, do you know whether to close this trade or not? Believe in me, closing smaller profits grows your account. Take note, closing smaller profits grows your account. So at this point, we can decide to either close this trade or leave it to run. But as I said earlier, I wouldn't enter such a trade because my methodology says I should enter at the crossovers. So ideally, here was the right place for me to enter the trade. But this is just for us to know how the boom works. So I entered 0 0.25, making this amount of profit. That's for the boom. So I can decide to close this trade. I've made 30 cents. So it's just close. Yes. And then I go into scout again for another. So I'll go for crash thousand. So crash thousand is buying at the moment. But if you watch closely, the green has already crossed the red down. So it was supposed to be a sell move, right? But in this case, it is buying because crash is already a buy trend. So I wouldn't go for this. I'll go for I'll search for another opportunity go for crash 500 to see the setup okay crash 500 has really crossed it crossed somewhere here so here should have been the best place to enter the trade but we, i missed the opportunity but so for us to know that crash is always in a buy trend i'll go for buy for crash now we are in the loss right so let's just give it some time. We'll go into profit. Yeah, not any profit. It just happened just like in profit. So you can as well wait, get 0 0.30 cent close. Or you can be making one one dollar. A trade one dollar per trade, you'll be closing your trades if, you, if you're able to make 10 to 20 trades within the day, you've made 20 dollars, which is very good depending on your equity. If you have an equity of let's say 200 or 100, 20 dollars a day is just excellent. So don't be in haste to get quick money, just take your time and then perfect your strategy. And one thing my brother said was that no strategy is perfect. No strategy is perfect. This I'm teaching you can fail you sometimes. Let me just give you an example. But you have to be patient with the market. You have to be very patient with the market. That's very, let me just show you an example. So we are making another 30 cents. So we can decide to close. Yeah. So that, that could be our target. I'm making 30 cents 30 cent of each trade. I'm making $1 of each trade. Yes, it's perfect. It is five minutes, so you can wait. It's closed. Yeah. Larry, so I think, let me just... I think someone wants hmm? to know your moving average settings. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, sure. Um, with the moving average settings, I have the 17. Simple close. That's the green. 17 simple close, that's a green. Hope you are, you are good. And then you have the 30 simple close, that's a red. 30 simple close, okay. being red. Yeah, yeah. So we are, we, are, we are just looking for crossovers. But you have to be patient, you have to be very patient. This is crash, right? And if you look closely here, there's a crossover. There was a crossover, but eventually it sold. It sold. There was another crossover here. So this can be just that little loss on your account because no strategy is obviously perfect. But if you're to follow the crossovers, believe me, you can grow your account. Patience, you can grow your account because it works. You just have to be patient with the, the market. You are not, the market is always right. That's one thing you have to know. The market is always right. I just have to play safe. Look for your strategy. Don't overtrade. If you have $100 account, $50 account, 
don't over trade you can just go your accounts okay so let me say we we, we actually tried what well, this week we try we are just going on a different strategy our previous strategies are working perfectly so we just developed another strategy last week so we tried with a very 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 small account and we were able to grow it 200 percent of what we deposited so assuming we deposited roughly hundred dollars we're able to make three hundred dollars that's just an example we to make three hundred dollars within a week just little trades knowing your daily targets observing it don't be too excited to over trade your accounts you can crush your accounts be patient with the accounts so i'll just at this moment just leave um my my brother to continue to continue with his so danny hello i'm here i'm sharing my screen yes okay All right um so like i have spoken about the trend trades okay trading a trend with the the moving averages let me speak about the spikes um for spikes i taught us in the other video where i dealt with a powerful rsi technique which myself i've been using uh, and I, I i use these two levels i use 25 and 75 to trade for spikes so somewhere here now i advise that you always have good enough equity and so I always tell when people approach me and they say, I have $10, I want to grow my $10 account. And I, I, I go like $10 is too small to grow, to, to, to grow quickly. Okay, so it's better you save and then start with a minimum of $50 or at best $100. Because if you have $100 and you buy at this level on the RSI, expecting a spike and it keeps going down, it's going to retrace. Because I, I, I spoke about the market retracing in that video, it's going to be true. So eventually you catch the spike, okay? So you go with, you make sure you are going with this strategy, this 2575 strategy, buying here. And uh, in the video, I showed you 30, 20, and then I added 15 to it. Added 15, but for this, you can set 25 and 75. And when it's 25 or goes right below 25, you can buy. And you catch this spike okay it should always work for you and uh, there are a few instances where the retracement might not be too big for you to catch the spike like this for instance this when you buy here you are going to make a loss here make a loss there and the market is going to retrace a little bit close to where your initial position was and if you are lucky and you stay in for 24 hours or so, or maybe about 18 hours, you should catch it again. Okay, but it always has to, it always deals with retracing, the market retracing. And let's take a look at crash. The opposite is true. The opposite is true for crash. And uh, for crash, you come in here, and if you're not patient enough, you might close your trade somewhere here. Uh, there was one particular trade where I think it was a, it was a boom 1000 trade. I, I gave an instruction on the page that we should buy boom 1000. And a lot of people were like, oh, it's, it's, the spike is keeping long. It's not appearing. So some of them closed it. And immediately they closed it. There was a long spike. And I caught about four positions with that spike. And that spike spiked about four extra times. I was like, wow, you just needed to be patient. So it was a, a big blow for those who closed early. But always know that the market will retrace. So if you enter here for a sell, it will retrace downward. It will retrace. There are a few instances where the retracement might not be so large as to hit your initial position. Yes, but then it, it does happen. There is no strategy that's 100%. So you have to deal with it. This, for instance, will retrace. And then you pick it again. This will retrace when you here, when you sell here, it will retrace and then you pick it again. So there's also a way in which you can analyze other time frames 
to catch spikes. But that's that's uh, that's for the pro class. That's for the pro class. Someone has a question. I thought someone had a question. Okay, so that's for the pro class where you analyze different times and uh, you use it, you use the time analysis to catch spikes. Let me delete these things. Uh, so this is the one hour time frame. But there's a way in which I analyze the higher time frames to cut spikes, okay? But this is for pro. It's, it's, uh, it's, high, it's, high cla it's highly classified, eh? Yes, so. But one thing you need to observe is that you always have support and resistance. You always have support and resistance appearing on your chart. For instance, this point is a support. So when price hits this support, and it doesn't break the the support, then it's going to bounce off. It's going to bounce off if it doesn't break it. Okay. And there's also a resistance at the top, which is here. For those of you who don't know support and resistance, support is the line uh, that is drawn below two low points. Uh, and the line that connects two low points, and then the resistance is the line that connects two high points. So this bounce off, at this point, we cannot call it a resistance because that's the first time it hits a horizontal line at the top. So we have to wait for a second one to hit it and bounce off. Then we are, we are sure that this line is a resistance. So if the third line breaks the resistance, then we know we are going to trend upward. Okay, we know we are going to trend upward. But if it bounces off, then we know we are going to sell again. Okay, so that's just a gist of how you can use higher time frames to, to trade spikes. Let's look for another uh, support or resistance. Let me switch to 30 minutes. Good. So we, we see our support here. One, two, three. So one, two, three points. So you see, this hits it. We cannot confirm a support yet until the second bounce bounces off. Then we know that these two low points is confirming a support here. So we get ready for the third point. Yes. Uh, the third point, when it bounces off, when it bounces off, then we are sure it's going to what? It's going to buy. Because we have a support drawn after the two points give us a confirmation that this was a support so in the in the uh pro class i'm going to teach how to avoid fake crossovers and this is out of experience there are many times that there have been fake crossovers fake crossover occurs when you you know this is supposed to be a support but then the the line breaks the line breaks indicating a fake support or a fake resistance in the pro class, I'll teach how to avoid that and how to notice them early enough so that you don't incur so much loss. And uh, so I'm, I'm using RSI for my trading and Larry is using moving averages. Uh, basically, that's it. So guys, we have a few minutes left. If you have any questions, please drop them in the chat box so we answer them. We have just three minutes and then the meeting will be over. Then we see another support here. This time we have four, four price points confirming it. One, two, three, four. So it comes this way. It's a bounce. You cannot uh, confirm. You cannot confirm a, a support. And then there's a, a, another bounce. Then we confirm a support because two low points are, are confirming a support. Then this bounces off, and then the fourth bounces off. So that's a support. Okay, so Larry will uh, wrap up. He will share his screen and then teach us a few things.
Hello, guys. Okay, so I'm back again. Yeah, so I initially gave you guys two moving averages. You have the red and then the green. And we're talking about crossovers. But I guess some people also would like to know how best we can avoid them this misleading crossovers, the, especially the, something like this, how to avoid them. Something like such a daily messed up trend. You don't know whether it's buying or whether it's selling. Well, the truth is we know how to avoid these trends. We have other indicators that we use and that is strictly for the pro class, yes. So we'll let you know, and we have nice packages for the pro class. We trade with you. It's not like we are just teaching you and letting you go. We trade with you for some time. Make sure you go on your accounts to the level at which you can trade on your own. So we basically trade with you concerning your risk management and all that we trade with you. And how to avoid such. So we have double crossing here. We have this crossing down the market went up. We have this crossing up, the market came down. We have other indicators that can let us know such a fake move. And it is for the pro class. So that is all I want to say. And please, if your account is small, don't over trade. Don't over trade. If you know your account is small, don't over trade. Take a trade at a time. Unless you are very sure and you can never be too sure. And for you to avoid such moves also, we are, we are always here and we'll be glad to teach you how to avoid such moves or spikes against you. So just take notice of that. I was trying to um, tell you that, you see, under one minute time frame, you are fishing for one minute candles. You are fishing for one minute candles. Each candle here is a minute. You could also switch to five minutes and fish for just one five minute candle. Just one five minute candle. So whilst you look at it this way, you could probably get some moving averages on the screen. Let's say, uh, let me just add some moving averages. This is five, which is the red. And then uh, let me use 21. And these are Fibonacci numbers, five and 21. Mm -hmm. So I could get for this crossover, okay, for this crossover, I could just get one five minute candle. So I'm going to buy for five minutes and then I'm out. I can buy for five minutes and I'm out. When it crosses, I can buy for five minutes and I'm out. Five and I'm out. I can buy for five minutes and I'm out whenever it crosses. So instead of trading M1, you could actually switch it to M5 and always look for one five minute candle to buy. And the opposite is true on Boom 1000. Just look for one five minute candle here. It crosses, you sell for five minutes crosses you sell for five minutes which is one candle at this point you sell for five minutes okay five minutes and you are good to go that's one candle and you are good to go so one minute five minutes you can take advantage of it now for the robots um let's look at the stochastic this is crash Hold on. So crash and then stochastic. Now this is your initial lot size. This is the level, uh, the level that if your stochastic mean line crosses above is going to buy on the crash. So to demonstrate visually, let me switch to M1. I'll delete these indicators and then add my stochastic bot. Check algo trading, lot size, 
0.2, multiply and loss 2. I'll explain these ones later. Let me delete this and then add my stochastic, which is an oscillator. Now, this simply means if my mean line, which is the light green line, crosses the 10 level. So I'm going to set, I'm supposed to set the 10 level charts indicator list, stochastic properties, change this to white, and then add a 10 level. So you see this, whenever the main line crosses 10, it's going to buy. So at this point, there's going to be a spike, but because there is, there is room for losses, it's going to uh, continuously be in that trade and pick your profit somewhere here. So there's a loss of about five, a space of about five candles. And you know, this spike is so little, it's not going to touch the stop loss, meaning the trade will still run until your take profit is touched. Then you come here, right at this point, the light green line crosses above 10, it's going to buy here, it's going to buy here and sell for approximately two to three candles and then close. So that's how it works. It's going to buy here, sell for approximately two to three candles and close. The same thing here. This did not touch, it, it, didn't, it didn't cross above the 10, so it's not going to buy here. So this is how it works. Now this is where you make a loss because this spike will, will get you, okay? But this is going to uh, recover the loss with Martingale. In other words, the lot size is going to increase when it buys here so that it can cover up for the loss or a part of the loss. Yeah, so that's how the bot works. You make sure you turn on your algo trading and then your bot also appears green here. There's a green play button here. And whenever you want to change the parameters, you right click and select properties and then change them. So multiply on loss means your lot size will multiply by two when you lose a trade so that it can recover for part of the loss. And multiply on profit is going to multiply your lot size by two so that you further recover for your loss quick, quicker, okay, or at a faster rate. This is your stop loss pips. 50,000 pips represents approximately five candles and 20,000 approximately two candles. So this will make room for a little spike. If the spike is lesser than five candles, you'll still be in the trade. If it's more than that, it will take the loss. And the reason why it's always good for your loss to be taken is that, let's assume this, let's assume this uh, gave you a loss. Now, if, this, if there's no stop loss, it means that just if, if the market is trending downward, you are going to lose all that money. But then we set a stop loss for the robot so that you are safe when this candle touches your stop loss, you know that the next one is going to be a fresh trade. Okay, let's just assume, let's just assume there's no stop loss and then your robot bought at this point and there was a spike. If there's no stop loss, it means that it's going to, it's going to go deeper in debt. But if there's a stop loss, only one spike is going to affect it. I hope you understand that. Yeah, so. That's how the robot works. When you don't want it to work, you just right click, remove, and then turn off your algo trading. And you are good to go. All right. Any questions? Uh, we should be closing any moment from now. Larry, any final words? If not, then we, we sum up. Someone's asking a question. Okay. Is accent um, also, um, can I get a sentence that we use, please, to follow the chat? Thanks. Which, which set, which um, sentence? Are you talking about the moving average, moving average sentence? Was it the one I just used or the one Larry used? The, for the one I just yeah, used, I for the one I just used, I oh, used. Oh, uh, you, you, want, you want the moving average? So we have we have 17, 17 simple close. Seventeen simple close. Um, that's for the green, and we have thirty simple close for the red. And the, the green must always cross the the red. I have the so when the green means go, the red means stop. So um, the green must always cross the red. So we have seventeen 
period moving average, and then the Tetsi period. I hope I've answered your question. Let me know if I've answered your question. Yeah, that's what Danny is showing you. Okay, you're welcome. Anytime. Okay. All right. So thank you very Any much for joining the class. Uh, please, if you have a question, just send it to me on Telegram and I'll, I'll respond. Okay. Um, Larry, thank you very much. And thanks to everyone that joined and made the class a successful one. Uh, I see Dan, I see Christina, I see Joseph, I see Joseph Waziri. We have two Josephs, R Romulus. I see top 10. I see Uka Princess. All right. Thank you very much for joining the class. We hope to bring you more of the class in, in future times. And then also all the best trading boom and crash. We hope you make millions and billions in the future. Billions, billions. We want the billions. Yes. The billions is, is too small. We want the billions. <laughs> we want trillions, eh? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs>